Hey, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick and easy tutorial on how you can make swaps or trades on the Solana blockchain using Jupyter, which aggregates liquidity from different decentralized exchanges and gives you the best price on every swap that you make. Now, before you can trade different Solana coins on Jupyter, you're going to need to have some Solana in a Solana wallet. I'm using the Phantom wallet today, and I made a previous video showing how you can actually set up your own Phantom wallet and fund it with Solana tokens. So if you haven't done that, then go watch that video, complete that step, and then come back and we can start swapping on Jupiter. And what you're going to want to do is connect your Phantom wallet to Jupiter. It's in the top right corner here. And once you're connected, it will show you how much you have in terms of assets and the different coins and the transaction history. So this is the simple swap feature and you can choose what token you're swapping from at the top and what token you're swapping to at the bottom. So in this case, I have a bunch of different coins and let's say I'm going to swap from my roll bitcoins into USDC, which is a stable coin. Now, once you've chosen what you want to swap from and to, you select the amount. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit max and you can see that 40.69 roll bit tokens is going to equal about $8.44. And right above the swap button, it shows you the process of how these orders are going to be routed. So you can see right now, if I open it up, that it's gonna take my roll bitcoins, swap them to Sol, swap them to USDC, and then they'll be in my wallet. And this transaction would be routed through the Orca decentralized exchange. But depending on when you come through and do your swaps, it'll be different. So for example, it literally just changed on me and the second swap from Sol to USDC would be conducted on Lifinity. Anyways, you can pretty much be sure that when you use Jupiter to swap, you'll be getting the best price that you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit swap. It's gonna pop up in my Phantom wallet asking me to confirm the transaction, which I will do. And in a couple of seconds, we can see that that transaction went through. Now, if I open up my Phantom wallet, I can see that I have $14.66 of USDC and a little bit of Sol, but the roll Bitcoin has disappeared because I swapped all of it. Now, important thing to note here is that every time you make a swap or any transaction on the Solana blockchain, you need to pay a small amount in transaction fees or gas fees. And so you're gonna to need to have some SOL tokens to pay for that. So if I got to a point where I ran out of SOL tokens, I would no longer be able to make swaps on Jupiter. Now that is the basic swap feature, but you can also use their limit order features, which is great if you wanted to buy a token at a specific price. So let's say I knew that I wanted to buy the roll Bitcoin if it reached a certain level. So let's say if it went down to 18 cents per token, I wanted to buy it here. Well, I could set up a limit order where I choose the price that I want to purchase the coin at, and then I could select an expiry if I wanted to leave this order open for a matter of minutes or even up to 30 days or longer. And then I would choose how much I wanted to spend. So let's say I wanted to buy $5 worth of Rollbit tokens. Then I could hit place limit order. Again, I'm gonna have to confirm the transaction in my wallet. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now the order has been submitted. And if I scroll down to the open orders section, I can see that this order is open. And if the price of Rollbit ever goes back down to 18 cents per token, my order will be automatically executed. Now, if in the meantime, I decided that I didn't wanna have this order open anymore, I could just hit on the close button here and then I would confirm the close transaction in my Phantom wallet. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I no longer have any open orders. So that's closed. And you can reverse the process. So you can set a limit order to sell something as well as to buy it just by toggling this button here right in the middle. So it's pretty simple. Now, what else can we do on Jupiter? Well, there is a DCA option, which stands for dollar cost average. And this is a good feature if Again, using the example of the roll Bitcoin. If let's say every week I wanted to buy $10 worth of roll bit, then I could set it up where I have a $10, 10 USDC order to purchase roll bit and I could select the frequency. So in this case, let's put week and then I can select how many weeks I want it to go live for. So 10 weeks, for example. And I can even set up a strategy where I have a min and a max price that I'm willing to purchase the roll Bitcoin at. 
but if I hit place order here, then it's again gonna ask me to confirm the transaction in my phantom wallet. And then every week it would automatically buy $10 worth of roll Bitcoin until those 10 weeks are up, as long as I had enough funds in the account. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that for now, but this is definitely a useful tool if you have an investment that you want to make regularly and you wanna set it and forget it, as it says right here. So. Definitely a useful strategy. What else can we do on Jupiter? Well, there is the bridge option where you can bridge from different chains. So let's say I had some USDC on Arbitrum and I wanted to get it to Solana, then I could do a bridge here. And using this bridge tool, you can bridge between any of these chains and Solana. Finally, there is the perps or the perpetual options section of the Jupiter trading protocol. And this is a little bit more complicated, but you can go long or short a token. So if you think the price is gonna go up, then you could buy a call option or you could go long the token. Or if you think the price is gonna go down, then you could short the token by buying a put option. Now, right now they only have perps open for three tokens, Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. And in order to make these transactions, you have to put collateral in. So you can put USDC or you can put SOL or you can put any of these other tokens that are coming up here. So let's say for example, I wanted to use one USDC as collateral for a trade. Well, I can also use leverage here. And this little slider bar here is gonna let me juice up my leverage all the way to 100X if that's something that I want to do. Now. Take this with extreme caution because if you use any significant amount of leverage, you run the risk of having your position being liquidated. So for example, at the maximum leverage of 100X, the entry price or the price of Solana right now is $40.83 per coin. And this position would be liquidated if the price goes up to $41. I basically need the price of Solana to go down only because there's a tiny margin of error and if the price goes up by even as little as 10 or 13 cents, then my position will be liquidated because I've taken on so much leverage. Now, if I did the same trade except with 20X leverage, then the liquidation price would be $42.63. So I'm buying myself an extra couple of dollars worth of wiggle room so the price can go up a little bit before it gets liquidated, but obviously you still want it to go down only. And the less leverage you use, the more wiggle room you have in the liquidation price. But using leverage to trade on options like this is very, very risky, so I do not recommend it unless you know what you're doing. So just to show you how it works, I initiated a tiny short using 20X leverage on a $2 collateral and so the liquidation price of this short is $42.60. And if we scroll down here to the open position, you can see this is what it looks like. So it shows you the profit or loss on the position. Currently, the price is going down a little, so I'm up 3.81 or now 5%. It shows you how much collateral there is. And so let's say that the price of Solana started going up. I could hit on the edit button and add collateral if I didn't want my position to be liquidated. And you can take profit or close out the position entirely right here, as well as add something called a stop loss. But I'm not gonna get into that right now because it's a bit more complicated. Anyways, this trade was actually doing pretty well. It's up 10%, so let's go ahead and close this out. Confirm, okay. The position was closed out, and if I go to trade history, it will show that I made a juicy profit of 19 cents on that trade, which actually is quite a lot considering how little I put into the trade. So yes, these are the key features of the Jupiter Solana DeFi ecosystem. And actually, if you're using a phantom wallet and you're making swaps directly in the wallet, often they'll be routed through Jupiter as well. But if you wanted to use some of the more complex features like limit orders, DCA, bridging, and trading perps, then you have to come to the Jupyter application itself. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. And if you're interested in seeing how many Solana tokens you might need to retire by the age of 2030, then check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.